Gonna do this practice in the woods. Awesome. Put your mat down. This is a practice that I look at look at how I am right here. I am like I was very um not having a good day. And then I did this practice and I felt much better. And so that's gonna be the way for you too, okay? This is gonna be about transformation. All right. Then go back to your mat and take off your socks and shoes. Yeah. Don't worry, we're going to start here in a second. Part of my not good day was the millions of technical difficulties I had with this video. Oh my God, I won't get into it. All right, anyway, so come to the front of your mat and find a place where you can feel some gratitude, you know what I mean? See if you can feel that gratitude through your feet. Finding the ground. It's really good. Come to the front of your mat. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale. Forward bend. Inhale to a flat back. So nice. Exhale. Step or jump back to your plank. Coming into your Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale. Come back to a Chaturanga Dandasana. And then a downward dog. Jump in on the same. Exhale to a forward bend. Inhale. Flat back. Exhale. Forward bend. Inhale. Arms over your head. Exhale. Hands to your heart. Again. Inhale. Arms up. I'm going kind of fast here. Exhale. Swan dive. Forward bend. Jumping back. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, come back to that push-up if you want to. Come to your downward dog. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale it to your nose. Inhale it up again. Exhale it across your body to your opposite elbow. Inhale it up again. Exhale it up across, uh, to your body to your near elbow. Inhale it up and come to your low lunge. Okay, so that was all really fast. Sorry about that. And the reason is because it was cold out there. I was kind of moving fast because it was cold. I have my hands behind my head, and now I'm holding them, kind of buckling them back and opening my heart towards the sky. Yeah. Step back to your plank. Inhale to an upward dog. Exhale. So your chaturanga dandasana, downward dog. Inhale, lift leg up. Downward dog splits. Exhale your knee to your nose. Inhale it up. Exhale across your body to your right elbow. Inhale it up. Exhale to your near elbow, inhale it up, and then exhale that foot between your hands, come down to your low lunge. Sorry, that was really fast. Opening your heart up to the ceiling slash sky. I have been on quarantine for a week and I've actually filmed five yoga videos, all of which I had to throw away because of technical stuff. So stupid. Step back. Plank pose. Um, here I'm going to hang out and plank for a bit. Join me. Let's plank. Plank it together. And you can tell, like the beginning of that, when I was busting through those sun salutes in that weird way, I just had a lot of that drama. A lot of the drama that's in the air was in my body. Try and let go of some of that now. Put your knees on the ground and your forehead on the ground. And here you are in puppy pose. You can wag your tail if you want to. What we're trying to do throughout this practice is find the ground. It's actually not that complicated. And certainly worth doing. And you don't have to do it outside in order to find the ground, by the way. Okay. Now I'm coming onto my side. And just mirror me here, okay? I'm on my side in this like 1950s swimsuit model kind of pose. Feeling the side bend and then look at me. I'm lifting up this leg. That's a little bit of Pilates there. You're flexing your foot and, and finding evenness. I only did this a few times. Oh, I think I did it more on this side than the other side. And then, cool, coming into a tree pose on the side. I really like this so much. Tree is so interesting. Oh, and I'm straightening my leg in my tree. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's Both of these are forms of tree, okay? And I just love how the hips are in tree pose. See if you can get your hips all nice and aligned. All right, moving on to something else. Oh, yes, now I'm coming into a side plank on my forearm. You can come up on your hand if you'd rather. And I'm trying to lift up my foot the same way I did before, but in side plank, this is actually really hard. And then I'm coming into that tree like I did before. I'm trying to balance here at the same time. And then you can pick up that top foot if you want to. 
that's hard. Yeah, maybe. Let it go and clunk on down into a dolphin plank. A dolphin plank is a plank on your forearms. We're doing a combination of stretching and strengthening here. That is yoga. Stay with your breath. Yeah. Good, and then I'm coming back to that puppy pose. Got your forehead on the ground? Yes. You got your butt in the air? Yes. Puppy pose is really good. Stretch through your shoulders, stretch your lower back. It's nice. Good, and then come onto your other side. Here, I'm going to do that other side thing. So I'm lining my body up. I could do better, but it's all right. I'm trying to line up my hips and my shoulders here, lifting this leg up in a Pilates kind of way just a few times, and then bend it into that tree. This is so nice. I'm into this, finding that hip opener in the tree, straightening it if you want to. Yeah. I'm breathing. Good. And then we're going to come up into dolphin plank, finding balance here and try to do the same thing. Okay. This is, I was not terribly balanced and not doing this very well. Lifting up that leg, coming into the tree. Maybe straightening it. I think I fell over here. Yeah, that was not very good. I fall over back to the dolphin plank. Come in now into a sphinx. All right, so you're on your forearms as we were in dolphin plank. You're rolling your shoulder blades back and down the back and doing this passive back bend sphinx pose. So good. Oh, never mind. I'm moving on. Now we're in locust. I've lifted up my legs and my arms. Locust pose. Getting some back strength going on. Stay with your breath. This is hard. And then I'm grabbing my feet behind me and kicking backwards bow pose. Sometimes I like to move my body with my breath and bow. Basically what you're finding here is a gigantic back bend. You're doing a back bend against gravity. Yeah, and you're also super cool using your feet to open your shoulders. See if you can find that as like a manual opening for your shoulders based on what your feet are doing and your ankles. Okay, come down, put one cheek on the ground and windshield wiper your feet back and forth. Find your um, very base of your spine here. Yeah, good. Yes. And then come back to Sphinx Pose, rolling your shoulder blades back and down the back. Breathe in here for a bit, finding some opening around the collarbone. And then push up to a dolphin. You've got your forearm still on the ground coming into dolphin. I came up onto my toes, I don't know why. Dolphin Pose is downward dog on your forearms. It's a shoulder builder. The first million times you do it, you're gonna feel your shoulders. I'm picking up one foot and kind of hopping. You can do that if you want to. This is the way we're gonna move into Panchamariasana, the forearm balance. I'm not gonna do it because I can't, but um, you know, we're getting there, getting there. Yeah, come down to child's pose. Put your forehead on the ground. I'm breathing. And then lace up your hands behind you and pick them up over your head. Feeling that shoulder stretch. And then come on up, bring that shoulder stretch with you. Okay, so this is my new thing, camel pose. You're opening in the across the shoulders, you're opening your heart in camel pose, right? I'm coming up onto my toes, but who cares? Because it's all about the heart. It's all about that heart opener, right? And then I'm gonna come back and bring this lumbar spine in. And you can do that if you want to, but you know you don't have to. You can stay up, you can put your hands on your hips and have it just all be about heart opening. This, what I'm doing here is turning my body into like a donut. 
It's not for everybody. If you've got back issues, don't even worry about it. Just stay up on your knees and do that, rolling the shoulder blades back and down the back of the heart part of the pose. If you are doing this, then feel the, the psoas release in the front of your body. I love that so much. And try not to feel like you're crunching your lumbar spine. Okay, we're trying to expand the lumbar spine. Trying to make it longer. And then come up gently. Do some cat cows, yes. Okay, so I'm doing a cow lift and then a cat tug. And after a long camel pose like that, you're really gonna feel your cat cows. So go gently, do it gently. Yeah, it's nice. Good, and then we're gonna do some side bending. Yeah, mirror me here, okay? I don't even know which is right and left, it doesn't matter. Just mirror me, and we're coming down to, this one is called Parigasana Gate Pose. And what you can see here is that it is triangle, but down on one knee. And so much as triangle is a beautiful side bend, this is also a beautiful side bend. I'm arranging my body in such a way that I can feel it where I wanna feel it, on the top of my hip, up into the side of my ribs, if your knee is uncomfortable here, it almost certainly means that your knee is in the wrong place. Move it around so that you get evenness between your limbs. Okay, and then put that hand on the ground and open into a kickstand. Yeah, so there's a heart opener. Nice. Opening your heart towards the sky. You can pick up that foot if you want to and kick it back. Kind of getting into that so as if you like that. Coming back to the kickstand. Mm -hmm. I'm making some circles with my arm. And then I found this spot where I could hold my arm away from me and get really deep into my neck. See if you can find that. See if you can find a spot where you're feeling a big neck stretch based on where your arm is placed. You'll know it. You'll know it when you find it. Look for it. And breathe. Good. And then come down and fold up your pose. Take that knee that was bent to the inside of the opposite thigh. And then we're going to do some long yin now. We're going to do some long yin. Laying the body down over the extended leg. We're going to stay here for a long time. This is part of Rita Janusar Sasana. It's a twisting forward bend. And what is happening here is what is happening here is so much we're releasing the hip we're releasing the hamstring we're releasing the low back and the calf but really much more than this we're releasing the mind okay you're doing yin yoga right when you feel like time has stopped Come to a place where you can really feel the ground underneath you. And the, um, the pose is gonna just develop. It's gonna develop like a Polaroid picture. It'll be really clear at the end and in the beginning here, it might be a little fuzzy. So just feel it, feel the edges of it. Yeah, it's really, yin yoga more than any other form in my opinion will change you. Go deep with this stuff. That said, of course, it doesn't matter how deep your pose looks. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how close you are to touching your toes. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you come to a place where you feel deep release, okay? Don't stretch past your point of comfort. Just come to a place where your mind will let go. That's where you want to hang out here. Good. 
Continuing to breathe and continuing to let the pose develop. Okay, and then come up and arrange your feet and your hands in such a way as to come up on an upward tabletop. I really like upward tabletop. Really like it. It's nice legs, particularly after a deep stretch like that. You can turn on your legs like you would in a chair or in a bridge, but even more so. And I really like the shoulders in upward tabletop too. It kind of it kind of puts the shoulders in a nice opening up kind of position. Good, come down from that. And, oh, we're going right to the other side. So, mirror me here. You know we're gonna do those side bends. All right, so the important thing that I didn't say on the other side when we were coming here to these gorgeous side bends is the legs are obviously really important. If you are uncomfortable, your legs are not in the right place. You need to balance your weight between the knee and the foot. You need to find like like elegance, the manner of, of like a warrior two. You know, elegance in your legs. Make sure you're not uncomfortable. Now here I'm finding that same neck stretch that I mentioned before, only in um, Parikasana instead of the kickstand. It's the same thing. I've got my arm kind of stretched away from my head and I'm looking for an interesting place in my neck. Maybe look for that. Good, and then let's go to kickstand, which is just means you've got your arms the other direction. You can kick back into this thing if you want to. Yeah. And then we're gonna come back to the kickstand and explore the shoulder a little bit and explore your neck a little bit. Kind of the, in a similar way to what we were doing before on the other side. The shoulder, I mean the arm and the neck are in this very intimate relationship. And if you, like me, have neck issues, you are going to feel this thing where you're holding your head kind of away from your arm and your arm is out at an angle. There will be a point where you're just feeling intensity along the side of your neck. And let it be good intensity, okay? Because bad intensity is always bad. Good intensity. Breathe into it. Yeah, and then fold it up just like we did on the other side. You're tucking your foot into your thigh. You're turning in the direction of that leg. This is gonna be great, right? We're gonna go, oh, it's gonna be so good. Come on down for your long yin on this side. You deserve it, it's gonna feel nice. I'm gonna get a little technical and some technical yoga talk. Tune me out if you don't want to listen to this right now basically anytime we're stretching into the hamstring as we are here this is deep hamstring work we are looking to follow that stretch up into our hip and up into our low back and for me at least it generally happens in that order focusing on the hamstring that's the back of your thigh feeling it release tracing those muscles up sides in the top of your hip into your low back. People who have tight hamstrings tend towards lumbar kyphosis. I have this myself. It's when your lumbar spine is rounded naturally and you kind of stand all like your hips are forward, like that kind of thing. Lumbar kyphosis. It often is a byproduct of tight hamstrings. And so what I'm doing here is letting those hamstrings go and in so doing, inviting a curve back into my lumbar spine and not a forward curve, a backward curve, kind of looking for a little bit of a back bend even as we're coming forward. If it doesn't happen right away, that's okay. But let it come.
and let your mind be hypnotized by the sound of your breath. Okay, come on up from that. And then let's do our upward table. I'm facing the other direction. Obviously, you don't have to. You're just face whatever way makes sense. Oh, up some upward table. Oh, but look what I'm doing. I'm straining my legs and then I made it into an upward plank. Upward plank is intense. This is a big old pose. This is like it maybe doesn't look like it, but it's a pretty big ask for your legs and your glutes and the back muscles to hang out here. But do it if you like it, and if not, stay in the upward table. If you are in the upward plank, you might want to try and bring your toes down towards the ground. That'll bring it way into your calves. It's a muscular pose. Good, put your hips on the ground. Pull your hip flush back. We're trying to kind of just like ease into this. I'm wearing some clothes that really blend in with the forest here. I'm not sure if you can totally see what I'm doing, but what I'm doing is a um, Pashimottanasana, the forward bend. That's it. Just laying the top half of my body down on the bottom half of my body. And hopefully you can see that I'm kind of taking a little bit of time here trying to find my back as I go down. Non-yogis think that what we're trying to do, like our great goal, is to uh, touch our toes. Like, hooray, we're going to touch our toes. It's not about that at all. Nobody cares if you touch your toes ever. What we're trying to do in a pose like this is release the hamstrings, release the hips, and release the low back. So like whatever shape your body has to come in in order for that to happen is fine. It's not about laying your top half of your body down on your bottom half of your body. It's not about grabbing your toes. It's about feeling that release. So put your body however it needs to be in order to get the release. Yoga is about honesty. It's why it's one of the more beautiful things in the world, you know? It's not about doing it right. There is there is a ton of emphasis, of course, on doing it right because nobody wants anybody to get hurt. But it's not about that. It's not about, like, looking the best or whatever. It's about um, really looking into your body and noticing what you notice and being with it. It's deep, deep honesty. Uh, stay with your breath. You know you're getting into it when you're starting to feel like my voice is coming from a long way away. That's where you want to be. That's the parasympathetic nervous system. It's very healing.
your breathing. This is a long, long forward bend. Enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it, you got to move your body around until you are. Enjoying, enjoying what you do is nine-tenths of yoga. It's super important. All right. Coming up. And uh, swish those knees back and forth in a windshield and wiper kind of manner. Yeah. And then come down on your back. And put your feet on the ground and grab your opposite elbows above you and let your knees go to the left. I had my feet on either edge of the mat and then I let them go and let my knees go to the left. It's a twist. It's like an easy twist though. It's like about so as getting into that so as. And then pick up the knees and let them go the other way. Oh, it's so nice. It feels so good. If you don't happen to be in the middle of the woods, you can imagine that you are. Stretch your legs out. And we're going to do Shavasana. I like Shavasana. It's interesting to notice when you lay your body down for Shavasana, if your hands happen to end up on a certain part of your body. This happens to me a lot. You can read that. Like here my hands went right to my third chakra that's the pancreas digestive system right under the rib cage it's um uh, personal power the seat of personal power that's what we believe in yoga it's uh, a sensitive part of the body all the chakras are anyway it's cool like if your hands you know people who do reiki believe that if the hands sh just gravitate towards a part of the body it means the body is healing itself finding a way to heal itself anyway enjoy your shavasana hey listen actually do this shavasana okay don't turn it off i will bring you out lay down here i'm gonna bring you out
Okay. Wiggle your toes and fingers and roll your wrists and ankles and inhale your arms in one direction, your feet in the other direction. Hug your knees into your body. What I was noticing here was that, you know, when you're hiking and stuff, sometimes the birds fly away. But when you're hanging out in the woods doing yoga for a long time, they come back. There were tons of birds just right over my head. All right, come on up. And come to a cross-legged. Take your hands to your forehead and breathe into your sinuses, honoring every cell in your body. Take your hands to your heart, breathe into your lungs. I dedicate my yoga practice to you. Yeah, right now we need people to be ambassadors of calm. That's what we need, ambassadors of calm, ambassadors of sanity. That's you. It might not be anybody else you know, but it's you. Go ahead and put your socks and shoes back on. Yeah. You can roll up your mat. Welcome to Western North Carolina. And thank you for practicing with me.